petrify, not at all. Things can petrify very quickly. We've got some examples here on the table of things that petrified very quickly. I'll show you those in a second. Here's a picture of a petrified water wheel. Here's a petrified firewood. It was chopped on before it got petrified. You can go to Southern Forest World Museum in Georgia, way across Georgia. There's a mummified dog stuck inside a tree. Some people say it's petrified. I don't know if it's mummified. I've not been there yet. But anyway, how can a dog get mummified just in a few, probably a few years? Chased a coon up the tree, got stuck. They named it Stucky, of course. That's the name for the dog. They had a contest to name it, and so they called it Stucky. Uh, tree, they cut the tree down for firewood. There's a dog inside. Here's a petrified cowboy boot with the cowboy's legs still in it. The boot was made in the 1950s. Got his leg shot off or torn off or who knows what, but there's his leg petrified. Here's a petrified fish giving birth. A petrified hammer was found from a marine base, marine barracks from World War II. Petrified hammer. A petrified hat found in New Zealand. Here's a kid, right, a kid sent me this right here on the table. A petrified crayon found in Arizona. I mean, the crayon is turned to stone. We have right here a petrified pickle. It's in our museum. Well, it's here tonight, but a guy sent me the, this and the jar with it. The jar is still in our museum. Um, he said, Well, Hovind, I found this old house in Montana. The roof was gone. The house had been empty at least 30 years. But we were digging around through what's left of this house and found the pantry. And there were pickle jars in there, but the lid to one of the jars rusted, and the pickle inside turned to stone. Would you like it for your museum? I said, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> one kid wrote me a letter. Here's the letter right here. He said, Brother Hovind, I was eight years old doing a science experiment. I put a bunch of acorns in a bucket of water to see if they would sprout, and I forgot about them. A year later, my mom saw the bucket on the back porch. She said, get rid of that bucket and all that junk out there. He said, uh, the acorns had turned to stone in one year. I have right here a baggie of petrified acorns. <laughs> it doesn't take long, folks. Don't let them tell you it takes millions of years for things to petrify. It's not true. A guy sent me a picture of a petrified pin cushion. The pin cushion, you can see the pins had rusted off, except for the, you can see the rust marks where the pins had been stuck in there. Petrified pin cushion. They dug up a grave in uh, Tennessee several years ago. They found the body of the person inside the grave had petrified, turned to stone. The doctor died and they buried him. Fourteen years later, his wife died. This is back in 1881. They dug a hole to bury Grandma and water went into the hole. And they thought, oh, we don't want to bury Grandma in the water, so they buried her someplace else. And then the kids got worried about Grandpa in that moving water. It hit an underground spring, apparently. So they dug up Grandpa. He'd been in the ground 14 years. And the article says, the occupant of the coffin had been turned to stone, presumably as a result of the uh, continual flow of water. It said the arms had rotted off, but the rest of the body had turned to stone, petrified. A guy found a petrified man in Montana. He took it five foot eight. The guy carried it around as a museum curiosity for years in carnivals and fairs and stuff. Petrified body of a man found on the beach in Montana, in a, a beach of a river. In Sao Paulo, Brazil, a lady went into the hospital. She said, my side's been hurting. The lady was 62 years old. They x-rayed her and found a petrified fetus, a baby, inside. She had been pregnant. The baby almost came to term and died, apparently, and turned to stone inside her body. 62-year-old lady with a petrified baby inside. Here's the article. You can read it for yourself. Um, I met a guy in Maryland who said he worked at a hospital, Brian Lackey, who lives in Washington. But uh, he, there's his phone number. He was in Maryland. He said they brought a lady in there and took out a petrified fetus out of her body. Uh, the baby's in, uh, in the museum now, or in, a, in a, a medical hospital up there. Petrified fetus. Here's petrified sacks of flour. Found in Arkansas, a flour mill flooded, the flour turned to stone. The sacks of flour were buried in, in water and mud and turned to rock. So the Bible says the high hills were covered. The earth was totally covered by a flood, 15 cubits. That's about 22 feet over the mountains. So the skeptics say, where'd all the water go? Oh, it's still here. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 8, the water's assuaged. That means to drop down, to sink down. If we filled this room four feet deep in water, and then all of a sudden the floor caved in over here and dropped down 10 feet. That's going to suck all the water from there into the hole. Well, during the flood, you'd get this sinking process as the ocean floors would drop out and the water would rush into those holes. The Bible says the water stood above the mountains. So I think during the first few months of the flood, the animals sorted out and got fossils were forming. During the last part of the flood, the plates of the earth are still shifting and they're unstable and they began to lift up or sink down different places. Thin spots sink down, other